difficult situation after the storm in jungle, uh, we are completely lost in space. What to do now? What would be the best idea? Maybe to go back to the basic knowledge. To consult geometry. What geometry could give us, how geometry could help us. Maybe to say that we will deal with the three basic geometrical elements that are point, line, and plane. For example, here in this space, we have a ground under our feet that will be the first plane, horizontal plane. Then we have at our back, frontal plane, and at our right side, profile. So, to make it more clear, to explain the other elements, I will use this chair. So we are in the plane, yeah, 2D plane. If I add one more dimension, we will be in the 3D space. Okay? So with these three basic planes, we will make a coordinate system. So according to our ground under our feet, that will be here on the chair, a sitting part of the chair. The back plane, frontal plane, will be a frontal chair. On the definition, the intersection between two planes will result in a line. In our case, that will be the x, x axis. On the intersection of horizontal plane and the profile plane on the right side, we will have y axis on the intersection on the frontal and profile plane that will result in a line that will be the x axis. So with these three axes and three coordinates, the result of the intersection of the three planes, horizontal, frontal and profile, will result in a point. So for example, I'm starting here at zero point. I will take this model and give him coordinates in space. 1, 3, and 2 in meter. So on the x-axis, I will go 1 meter. On the y-axis, 1, 2, 3 meters. And 2 meters on the z-axis. So exactly, we are now sure where is this model in space, where are we in space. That is a great help to find out where we are. within we have oblique projection, axonometric, and we have also orthogonal projections. So I guess maybe you are curious about how we use geometry in our everyday life. So maybe even you are dealing with the science and art, in one moment you will have the idea, the main point of your idea, 
and you will mark it somehow. Yeah? Then the other one follows, and you will connect this point with a line. So it's another uh, definition of the line, connection of the two points. And everything happens actually in a plane. So all of us are using geometry in everyday life. The important thing to highlight here is even our ideas in our head, in our mind, have a really precise geometry, already ready to be explained. In our local language, if we want to explain more in detail, so something is not completely clear, we will ask, really? Do you want me to draw you that? And actually, we will use these basic three elements to make it completely clear. So about the shapes in geometry, actually, uh, most of the time we are dealing with a circle since we are in jungle and there is a lot of beautiful flowers around us. I will use the circle as the basic shape in geometry and to give him a symbol of the flowers. So by drawing five or six circles, everybody will be aware that I'm talking about the flower. Right? Uh, the other shapes that are commonly in use in our everyday life are square and equilateral triangle. Yeah, we are familiar with these shapes. And maybe that's a good moment to go back to the ancient Greece and talk about the five platonic solids, regular polyhedra, absolutely symmetrical, beautiful shapes. So I will start for the well-known cube. I have a square, right? And that is in the plane, 2D. We are in the 2D space. By adding a third dimension to the square and connecting six squares together, that will result in a cube, a well-known cube. The thing is, that all platonic solids also have a symbol and a color that is associated with the symbol. So, for the cube, it is earth, and the color is yellow, gold yellow. The other platonic solid is a tetrahedron. So, we have equilateral tri a triangle in the plane. We are adding one more dimension, third dimension, and by connecting, Four of them, we will have a tetrahedron. The symbol is fire, and the color is red. By connecting eight equilateral triangle, we will have another platonic solid, beautiful octahedron. The color is green, and the symbol is air. By connecting 20 of them, 20 of equilateral triangle, we are going to have icosahedron. The color is white and the symbol is water. And at the end, our beautiful planet Earth with a symbol of dodecahedron, 12 regular po polygons are connected together, pentagons. The color is blue. resulting again in the shapes and 
maybe this is the good moment to go to the topics. All these shapes we can find in nature, actually around us and inside us. So these are the photonic solids, they really exist in nature. For example, if I took one leaf and I can easily inscribe uh, that leaf in the shape of Dodica here. To make uh, maybe a little bit clear the terms that we are using here, biodesign, that's the topic, the main topic. But probably all of you heard sometimes in your life for bionics, biomimetics, uh, applied biophysics, biognosis, all these terms nowadays are under the term biodesign, okay? But the story started at the beginning of the 19th century when Matt Kalluck pronounced bionics as independent discipline. In that moment, his main idea is to connect words bios and technique. Bios are, have Greek origin, it means life or a living element and techniques. That's how bionics started. But nowadays, biodesign is actually multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, or transdisciplinary, call it hybrid scientific discipline, which enable us to merge, to overlap and intertwine these three disciplines biology, geometry, and technology. So we will go back from the 3D space to the 2D plane. And uh, let me try to make a little bit clear the situation about the connection, the analogy in geometry and nature to be sure that mere coincidence, the theory of the mere coincidence must be rejected. So if you take a look in the nature and you will see the shape of the crown of the tree, maybe you will recognize some spherical shape. When you go into the detail, maybe you will see the shape of triangle of the leaf. Or you can exercise during your stay in nature what you can do. So actually you can go deeper and then analyze the things that are like uh, arrangement of the leaf at the branches. They can be symmetrical, they can be asymmetrical, cylindrical, or they can be arranged in a different way. So actually you recognize that I'm using geometry language to explain Botany, which is a part of biology. So maybe uh, one more thing that is important to highlight here, that uh, what engineers would do in a case when they are facing really serious tasks and problems to solve, the recommendation from the biodesign approach would be to go back to the nature study the biological processes, and in that way, their final solutions will be the most economic, the closest to the ideal, what happens in nature that way. So universal structural phenomena that apparently exist in a different occurrences, by design tends to unite those phenomena and to explain that with the logic of the single system. Uh, Biodesign have aim that merging between these three disciplines systematically, essentially, and uh, logically to make connections, to establish relations and or interrelations and or correlations. So at the end, it will be derived some rules, principles, and conclusions that could be easily applied into the general cases. So, serious task, right? Well, I hope now that it's completely 
clear that there is a connection between botany and geometry. Here we are using technology, right? Technology is a part of our everyday life. So obviously it is completely clear. Concerning the applications, the applications of the final biodesign solutions could be applied really widely and broadly in different professions. But here we will talk about the application in the landscape architecture. That is our idea here. So we will start for the, from the beautiful bellflower, Campanula persicifolia, which is, because of his decorative properties, is producing uh, like a lot of types of different hybrids, and maybe you will recognize this shape in a nursery production. But the idea is here to talk about the Campanula persicifolia that, that we will easily find in nature. So on the edge, edges of the road, you will recognize this beautiful flower. And also, maybe you, if you take like a deeper look, you will see that there is a three types of leaves over there, different, differently shaped. That could be additional uh, bio-inspiration for the bio-design. Actually, uh, this is a widespread species of Eurasian origin. And how we started the procedure. First, we go in the nature, find that species. Then take a photo, detailed photo of the part of the plane that, will, uh, that uh, actually inspires us. And in this case, we will go deep to the flower petal and see how is the nature over there and make a lot of freehand drawing sketches. That is also important. But after that, we will enter the software. So in a appropriate software, we will again use geometry. This is a Voronoi diagram. That is the methodology that is applied here. And actually, you will again recognize here points, the closest po points of the planes of Voronoi cells are connected with the orthogonal line to the cell wall. So sometimes, in nowadays, in most software already, Voronoi diagram is implemented. So we are using uh, advantages to uh, work fast and easy, and to have as many final ideas as possible. So we can easily rotate, add some parts, uh, separate it. To gain this final spatial installation, that is the benches that should be used in the open public space. But you can easily imagine <coughs> to have this chair in your living room, hopefully. Hmm? Or maybe a nice pair of earrings based on this design. That will be great. So in that way, we are in the fashion design. We are in the interior design, not only landscape architecture. What we done also here that was interesting, because we opened the questionnaire to the public and ask them to compare, it was a visual questionnaire, the benches that are already, already did exist, exist in the open public spaces that we have in our city with this bench. And let them to answer. What is most familiar for them? Would they prefer to use this type of design? We were lucky. Uh, most of the people recognize this to be used like for everyday life. So the next species is very well known dandelion. You will recognize this, right? So especially in the busy city area, completely covered with the concrete. And there will be a few cracks over there. And the species that will be there probably will be dandelion. Actually, this is a beautiful plant, Leontodon taraxacum, and the uh, colors of the flower are yellow to pale yellow. So this is the inflorescence. Every part of the uh, flower is a tongue shape. And the thing that is of our interest about this species is a white spherical ball. 
that we immediately we will bring you back to your childhood, right? And you will remember the moment when you make a wish upon the dandelion in his full blown face, right? Sometimes people will recognize this species as a mess on the lawn. But maybe when they are removing that species, it would be good to make a salad of it because the complete species is eatable. All parts are eatable. Hmm? So we started with the procedure here. We covered the flower in his full blown face, full of seeds with the Voronoi diagram, that was the methodology, and cover it with the nets of triangle. With the idea to make a connection because of the characteristic of the species with our final solutions. So maybe you heard about the Buckminster Fuller. He was the inventor of the, this kind of shapes. Hmm? Actually, that is a geodesic dome. And uh, it is well known for the stability. So this shape would be great to use in a storm, like we have at the beginning of the lecture. We actually plan to make a nice pavilion of it, with the lightings that have a shape of the seed. And maybe you will recognize this shape also from the science fiction books, or how the future city is supposed to look like. Hmm? Not only that, we actually decided to work on a leaf as well, as a spatial structure for the lightings. So the oval shape of the leaf, uh, deeply serrated, is copied here. But additionally, the fine nerves on the leaf are also should be lightings, but it is easy to imagine to use this final shape in uh, printing on textile in that way it will enter on the fashion uh, design. But also you can imagine whatever comes to your mind where to use these final solutions. Actually, after bellflower and dandelion that are very like uh, widespread plants, we can find it and everywhere. This is the species that we will not find everywhere. This is the protected species that is Ramonda Natali. It was discovered by Josip Pančić and Savo Petrovic, like a new species for the science. And it is named to the queen Natali Obrenović actually uh, have uh, significant for our culture because it represents the day of peace in the First World War. With this species, it's a super interesting, it is endemic, it is a uh, relic, it is protected by law. You, you will not find them except in the canyons and uh, gorges of the West Balkan, not everywhere. And uh, since these species have a specific physiology, that botanical process is super interesting, because in the better weather conditions, on the bad environment, you will see this species completely dried in brown color, so it will play dead. But when the conditions will be again fine, you will see it green and blooming again with this beautiful, delicate flower. There will be usually five to six flower petals on the flower, but we use just one that is source shaped and apply the same methodology as at the bell flower, that is the Voronoi diagram. And in software, adequate software, it is super easy to work with this part of design, there is a set of common that you have to connect. And when you have a right extension, you will send it directly to the 3D printer. Okay? And you will have this model, 3D printed. That is Queen Natalie Pavilion. We name it uh, in the honor to Queen Natalie. Because she was, she's still 
the biggest donor to the University of Belgrade ever. So, this pavilion could be used for open public spaces, but for me it's uh, easy to imagine that we have shelters on the bus station in the city with this shape. And during the daylight, if the ceiling stays transparent, we're going to have like beautiful shadows on the floor. And additionally, during the night with artificial uh, lightings, we can have the same situation. But also, you are free to imagine this shape as a part of the jewelry, or whatever comes to your mind. In that way, since we are in the jungle, to make a long story short, just briefly, to say again on the ex examples of the beautiful orchid flower, which is a symbol of femininity, it is concerned to be the most beautiful flower of the world, so it is in a way familiar to all of us. And briefly, we'll go, what is the procedure? Procedure is to go directly to the nature, to stay there, to make a nice photo with the old details that we want to use, then to make as many freehand drawings as possible of the old tiny details on the plant directly. After that, we can easily enter the appropriate software. We will make a 3D model. We will test the stability of the 3D model. And if we are lucky, we will send it to the 3D printer and have that model. Of course, this is a solution by design conceptual solution of the spatial installation that is for the open public spaces, but you are free to decide where you want to use it. And you have also, any time, opportunity to change it, okay? So, with this by design approach, actually, we are in eco-friendly approach, completely in accordance with sustainability postulates. The final solutions are proposed to be used for all creative dis disciplines, not just for the one that was mentioned or the many that we mentioned. And uh, we are used here the latest technology. Actually, all the images that you see here was produced by artificial intelligence. Okay. So, let me conclude. We were in the jungle after the super heavy storm. We used geometry and hopefully recognized during this lecture what is the potential of what nature gave us, how we can use it in the bio design. And I think that all of us should appreciate and respect what nature gave.